be to God. We're going to continue our study this morning on resurrection power. Resurrection is who Jesus is. It's not a place or an event. Jesus came to show the character and nature of our Heavenly Father, and it's always resurrection. He came to bring life and light. Resurrection power is a power released that guarantees to everyone throughout eternity a reversal by a heavenly force, and it will reverse any situation that seems to be a setup for a put down. Each word of God is like a container that holds resurrection power. Because we know that the word of God is a seed. And every seed has within itself the DNA and the ability to reproduce itself and become more like it. For instance, a corn seed, you plant a corn seed and you will get corn. You plant the word of God. This is a Bible. And there's lots of words printed on it. And it doesn't mean anything and do anything for us until we take these words that are printed on these pages and receive them as God's word and we plant them. And there's only one way to plant the word of God and that's with our mouth. We plant the word of God with our tongue by saying words. And that's how we plant them. This is our seed source. So every word of God has within it resurrection power. And we see places throughout the word where people were set up by the devil only to be put down. We see that in the temptation of Jesus where Satan took him up to the top and said, I'll give you all these kingdoms. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. Well, he was set up and it looked like he was going to get everything and not have to go the way of the cross, etc. But Satan planned it for a put down, but the Holy Ghost raised him up. Amen? Resurrection power is rising. We saw that the meaning, a very simple meaning of resurrection is a rising again. We also saw in Micah 7, 8 and Proverbs 24, 16, that it says, when I fall, I shall arise. When it looks like the devil has completely put you down, the resurrection power in the word of God spoken over that situation will rise it up. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what happened in your past or my past. I pour the water of the word on that situation. And even though it looks dead, it'll rise again. Hallelujah. Because of the resurrection power of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We just started and I'm already happy. So we are in a review here. But 2 Corinthians, we saw that... When a person's mind is closed, it's hard for him to believe the truth of God's word in his heart. If we've been sitting in a situation where all we've heard is healing isn't God's will. If that's all we hear, then somebody comes up and says, I want you to know that it's God's will to heal you. Unless we are willing to receive the report which we saw in, in Isaiah 53, 1. Unless we're willing to receive the report, our mind will be closed and that word will never get into our heart. It always goes through our mind to get into our heart. It's in our eyes, our ears, our mouth. And then it gets in our heart. But if our mind is closed to resurrection truth, we'll never need to be bothered by resurrection power because it won't be evident in our life because we didn't allow it in. We say, oh no, my circumstance is too bad for that. Nothing is impossible to them who believe the resurrection power in the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Jesus has opened the door. He said that he became a curse so that the blessing might come on us. And in that blessing is an empowerment, an empowerment to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish this earth, to have dominion and subdue. But if I stand there and say, oh, you wouldn't believe it. I can't have all that stuff. I can't multiply. I can't. I can't. I have shut the door. Nobody can shut the door in anybody's life except themselves. 
Nobody can shut the blessing door in my life except myself. So don't, we can't be blaming other people. I really would like to be able to sit down, put my feet up and say, I don't have something and it's all David's fault. <laughs> but it's not going to work. Right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Might work if I said it's Tim's fault, but not if I said it was Dave's fault. Or those kids you gave me, Lord. After David just bragged on how wonderful they are, and they are. <laughs> Glory to God. So in order to have the blessing, the empowerment, the dominion, we have to be willing to work with God and step through that door and say, okay, Lord, show me the next step. We work with God. It's the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. Notice the law. There are laws, rules, conditions, principles to walking in the blessing. We also saw in John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Remember, we crossed out that little he in there because it was italicized, should have never been in there. De Jesus never said, I am he. It just weakens the whole thing. He said, I am. The great I am, who God showed himself to Moses, I am. I am everything you're ever going to need. That's what that is. We saw in John 19, 11 that Jesus told them that you have no power over me unless it was given to you. And when Jesus said, no man takes my life from me except I lay it down, he laid it down, he gave them permission to take him, that's why he was taken. No person can have power over you. Satan has no power over you, no authority over you except what you give him. That's real good news. That's really good news. He has no power over any child of God except what we give him. We saw in Ephesians, we saw in Colossians the way we were, the reason we needed a savior it says that we were aliens, separate from the com commonwealth of Israel. We had no covenant without God. And then Jesus. It because of the sin is because of what flowed from Adam. That's why all man are, men are sin. Sinful, pardon me. They're not sin. So we received that. Romans 8, 11, I'm going to read it out of the message translation. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus. Well, glory to God. Just all shout right there. What did the Holy Spirit do in Jesus? If he did that in Jesus, he'll do the same thing in us. Glory to God. When Jesus went into hell, he had all that sin, he had all that sickness, all that poverty, that whole mess on him. He came out victorious. None of that was hanging on him. He didn't have the smell of it on him any more than the three Hebrew children had the smell of smoke on them. And that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. Oh, hallelujah. You just say, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Resurrection power dwells in every child of God. Glory to God. Back to reading this uh, message. Moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ is. What's the problem? We haven't gotten it from our head to our spirit. And received it, taken it, and believed it. And we've made excuses. 
so, and that's that same spirit, that same power that God breathed in Adam in Genesis 2-7 when God breathed in Adam and he became, it says a living being or a living soul, but he actually in the Hebrew it means he became a living, speaking spirit like God. So that if he's like God and God said and it was, then Adam would say and it was. And he was the first Adam and Jesus is the last Adam and that same power dwells in us and if we get our act together and do what God told us to do we will say and it will be but only if we say what Jesus said and only if we say those things we hear our father say and don't make up a bunch of stuff on our own God doesn't say I will watch over Arlene Kinzel's word and whatever she says I'll just bring it to pass poof It's like these Disney things, you know, with this wand. That's kind of sometimes what we think God is. God says, I watch over my word to perform it. And his word in my mouth, he watches over to perform. Hallelujah. So that makes us all equal. That means I don't need to go to some kind of speaking school to get a degree in it so that I speak right. And then those words will come to pass. No. I just have to take what my heavenly father said. Hallelujah. We're all on equal footing here. Isn't that wonderful? God is so good. He doesn't have favorites. Isn't that wonderful? I'm really thankful for that, you know. Hallelujah. So then we also saw in Romans 6 that the power of the resurrection belongs to us. It's ours. And in Deuteronomy, we saw that we have to choose. God said, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Now you choose. You choose. You choose. You choose if you're going to be successful in school. You choose. It's your choice. It's not the teacher's. It's your choice. Students, it's your choice if you're going to be successful in school. Your choice. And it's not a teacher's fault because we got the greater one in us who is our teacher. And he can override that and overrule that. Hallelujah. Okay, so now we're starting, I believe, new this morning. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Please. We've talked about the resurrection in us, having it. I want us to go a bit more in that. Ephesians 1. Well, let's, let's start at 17. Ephesians 1, 17. And I'm going to read it in probably a couple of different translations, maybe. But Ephesians 17. 1, 17. Ephesians That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We said that if our mind will not receive what the word is saying, we will not benefit from it. We will block it off. It will never get into our spirit. We'll never have faith in it. Stay in Ephesians, please. Just put your finger in there, but let's look at Matthew a moment. Matthew 17, verse um, 18, well, 17. Jesus had asked Peter, who do, you, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, well, they say all these various people. Then Jesus said, well, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says to him, blessed, blessed. That doesn't mean, oh, Simon, you're so smart. And left it there. He said, blessed. He says, Simon, you are empowered to prosper. Simon, you will have dominion. You will subdue. You will be fruitful. You will multiply. You will replenish. That's what blessed means, right? We already have established that. So he didn't just say, oh, blessed. Such a smart boy. No, because he knew who Jesus was. Because he knew that he was the Christ, the anointed one with the anointing. Jesus said to him, you are blessed. 
You are empowered to prosper. You are empowered to multiply, be fruitful, and replenish the earth. You are empowered to walk in dominion and subdue because of what? Because you know and have revelation of Christ, the Son of the living God. And today we still need that. We say, oh, I know Jesus. And maybe we do. But we have never plumbed the depths of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one and his anointing, burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. So he said, because you know that, you're blessed. So that tells us that's a key. We need to know this. We've studied this before, but this goes right in with resurrection power. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. I can tell anybody that this is what it is, and they go, oh yeah, that's nice. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. But unless I get revelation knowledge, it's not going to benefit me because it says here in Ephesians that the Father of glory will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And that's the same Father that gave Peter the revelation of the Christ, the Messiah. It's not different. So we can't say, well, this Matthew was just for the Jews. That's all he's talking to there. No, because it's saying the same thing in Ephesians 1.17. We need to get revelation knowledge, the eyes of our understanding enlightened from our Heavenly Father, which comes by the Holy Spirit. 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know. Now here the Bible is telling us we've got to know something. And what do we have to know? What is the hope of his calling? And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We've got some riches in our inheritance. And we have got to know what they are. They are in the anointing. They are in the resurrection power. Amplified says... For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. A spirit of wisdom. That is not another spirit. Everybody, who is the spirit of wisdom? The Holy Spirit. And in Isaiah, and I'm not going to go there, but it talks about the sevenfold ministry workings of the Holy Spirit, and wisdom is one of them. That he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into the mysteries and secrets. Remember in our last teaching we talked about the mysteries. In Jubilee we talked about that. In the deep and intimate knowledge of him. We get these secrets through deep intimate knowledge of Jesus Christ. The anointed one. And his anointing. Remember Christ is not Jesus last name. Christ is the Greek for the Hebrew Messiah, which means in English, the anointed one and his anointing. So there are deep secrets in the anointing. Having the eyes of our heart, that means revelation knowledge, flooded with light, so that we can understand the hope to which he has called you. There is a hope to which he has called us. And how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. Now we have an inheritance. We're joint heirs with Jesus. But he has an inheritance in us. We are his inheritance. Isn't that what it says? Of his inheritance? We are the riches of Jesus' inheritance. Because then it says his body's filled with the fullness of us. He's filled with the fullness of his body and we are the body. Well, that's not because of we're so wonderful. We are wonderful in him. It's not because we've done something on our own. It's because of what he did. But God gave the work of the gospel to man. And as the Father was glorified through Jesus, 
He is now glorified in the earth through his body. And we've got to get revelation of that. We need a revelation of that. We are not just something that happened. That Jesus came and died for us so we won't have to go to hell and we just wander like beggars through the heat and cold while we're here on the earth. We have a job to do. And it takes resurrection power to do it. Which is grace? Which is the anointing? Which is the Holy Spirit? They're not all different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to know what he's called us to do. We have to know what our inheritance is. And we have to know the power of the resurrection according to these scriptures. Now verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. This exceeding greatness of his power to us is according to the working of his mighty power. It's not the according to the working of my great strength. It's according to the working of his power. Amplified says, so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. To whom whom will believe the report and to whoever believes the report, the arm of the Lord will be revealed. The arm of the Lord is the strength of the Lord. If you don't believe what I'm teaching you, you won't have to be concerned about resurrection power. You won't have to be concerned about any of it. it it's in you if you're born again, but it's not going to be flowing through you because you won't receive it. How can something work for you if you don't receive it? Somebody gives me a car, If I don't receive it, it's not working for me. That's just the way it is. Somebody walks up and gives you some money. It's not working for you if you don't take it and do something with it. Preferably sow it or invest it or do something good with it and it'll work for you. Now, The Johnson translation of uh, 19. And that you will be aware of the credible, immense strength which is available to us. Stop and think. The strength. Resurrection power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us. You see, what God calls us to do, he also gives us the ability and the empowering to do it. He doesn't ask us. Sometimes people ask you to do something and then they don't give you the empowering and the ability, you, the, uh, you haven't got the ability to do it. But if God calls us to do it, he gives us the strength, the power, and the ability. So never say, well, God asked me to do this, but I'm not going to do it because I don't know how. Well, probably in yourself you don't. And myself, I don't know what I'm doing here, really. That wasn't my thought. But in God, all things are possible. He's taken the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Not the wise in Christ, the wise out there. And that you be aware of the credible, immense strength which is available to us. You see, we have access to resurrection. To the strength And power God demonstrated in Christ when he raised him from the dead and gave him supreme authority. Oh, people, that's available to us. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us to walk now. Whenever you hear of... of, brothers and sisters in some other country being persecuted and and all those things happening. Just know that's not God. What you have to do is pray the Ephesian prayers that the eyes of their understanding being enlightened. That they may know what is the hope of their calling. And they will get revelation knowledge of the greatness of his power towards them who believe. And that the working of angels are for them. And they can speak the word and these martyrs don't have to be martyred and they won't be martyred. 
They need revelation knowledge of their authority and what Jesus has done for them and what's in them. And get rid of this crazy teaching where it says it's, it's wonderful. We just have to be persecuted and killed because we're Christians. That's a lie from hell. What good is that resurrection power in us for today if that's what's supposed to happen to us? There was no need to put it in us. And if God wanted them to be martyred, why didn't he just get them born again and take them out of the way right away and not have them go through that suffering? That's a lie. Pray that the eyes of their understanding being enlightened. I remember when the Berlin Wall fell, they said, the East Germans said that they somehow... Kenneth Hagin's book on the authority of the believer got behind that wall. And a group of believers read it and believed it and started speaking to that wall. Started calling it down in Jesus' name. Did it come down? Did the prison doors open for Paul? We need to get some enlightenment and change our way of thinking. I'm not putting my brothers and sisters down that are being persecuted. It's a horrible thing. But just to pray for them and say, oh, God bless them and be strong as you're being butchered and your children are being mutilated, that's a travesty of the power that God's put within each one of us to pray that the eyes of their understanding being enlightened. If God picks someone up and translates them over there to preach the gospel to them so they will hear the good news that they don't have to be beaten and put down. That's what they need. Philippians, please. Let's go to Philippians. Philippians 3.10. And here's Paul, who had gone and had visions and went into heaven and, and everything. And he said, well, verse 9, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. That is something that is so important. If we're going to walk in resurrection power and the fullness of God, we've got to get rid of our own righteousness. Well, I've done everything right. Well, I served for three years. Well, I did this and I did that and therefore I did this. Therefore, God must think I'm right. I'm okay. That's my own righteousness. And it is as filthy rags, it says in Romans. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. And then when you're walking in the law, we studied that with grace. Then grace isn't going to work because you're no longer depending on grace. You're depending on yourself because of all the nice good things you've done. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And if it wasn't for Jesus, no matter what I did, I would have zero righteousness. You don't get little bits of righteousness, people. You are made righteous. Your spirit man, when you got born again, became a new creature in Christ. Old things were passed away and you were made righteous. That's your spirit. Now we're to do something with the soul realm. We're to renew our mind. The soul realm is your mind, will, and emotions. We renew our mind to think like God thinks. And our behavior is to line up with what God says. Just because my spirit's born again and we are spirit creatures doesn't mean I can go out and do anything I want and call it grace. It is not. That's an abomination to God. He says, be imitators of God and God's not out there running around doing crazy stuff. So don't use that as an excuse that we can just go sin. We miss it. That's not the point. So anyway, I'm not going to get into that whole crazy teaching that's out there. But God has called us. It says, be ye holy as I am holy. And touch not the unclean thing. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. And as we heard this morning, what fellowship has righteousness with darkness? It's not saying that you can't go and work with somebody out there, but your fellowship isn't with them. 
You minister to them, you're a light to them, you share the good news with them, but your fellowship is not with them. Ten, that I may know him. Now Paul is saying, I may know him. I may know Jesus. We're back to revelation knowledge of who do I say I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the anointed one, the son of the living God. And he said, that's revelation knowledge. And Peter, Paul saying, that I may know him. After going to heaven, doing all that stuff, he said, that I may know him. There is never an end to knowing him, ever. But then there was something else he wanted to know. Know him and the power of his resurrection. He needed to know the power of his resurrection. Resurrection is not an event. It's not a place. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. But we have to know the power that's involved in that. Amplified says, For my determined purpose is that I may know him and that I may progressively become, so it's a progression, more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, and that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing outflowing, remember that, we're going to go to a scripture on that, outflowing, outflowing from his resurrection, the power outflowing from his resurrection, and we've already seen that.